this, this new report about this assassination attempt, which is being blacked out by the media. You think that this would be a huge, huge breaking news story that would be everywhere. We're not seeing it anywhere. Sometimes you find the smoking gun. Let's say there's a smoking gun that would implicate the United States. Now you have two options as a nation. I'm Spiro for Newsbud.com with breaking news you will not find anywhere else. But before we jump into this, back in February, Newsbud published a breaking report where high-level sources within the State Department told Newsbud that rogue elements within the CIA and the State Department were sabotaging the White House's efforts to facilitate the release of a U.S. pastor from Turkish custody. The sources told Newsbud that it would be more beneficial for the United States as leveraged against Turkey if the pastor were to remain in Turkish custody, citing human rights violations against Turkey's government. Or better yet, if the pastor, Andrew Brunson, were to die while in Turkish custody. Now just recently, Sibel Edmonds and Newsbud released for the first time in English breaking news about the pastor's case and its connections to covert CIA operations, including the failed coup attempt which took place in Turkey in 2016 and much more. Now these are must watch reports that you will not find anywhere else, so be sure to watch and share them. But joining us right now is NewsBuzz founder and editor Sibel Edmonds with more bombshell breaking news regarding a failed assassination attempt against the pastor in Turkey. Sibel, this is huge. Why are we not seeing this everywhere? I haven't seen it anywhere. It's shocking because the news came out less than 48 hours ago. As you just mentioned, Spiro, six months ago, I reported and NewsBud was the only, only news organization reporting about this plot to eliminate, to whether through poisoning or other methods, eliminate this pastor uh, Bronson in jail in Turkey and make Turkey look really bad by saying that this was, you know, this was by Turkish government and the Turkish officials putting a hit on this guy in jail and then use this against Turkey in order to gain leverage. Now, this was five, six months ago. We were the only news organization reporting on this. And in less than 48 hours ago, after the, our original report six months ago, we see this breaking news, headline news in Turkey. Turkish governments have arrested five individuals, at least five individuals, who were part of this team to eliminate Pastor Bronson per their CIA boss's order. Initially, this attempt was going to target him while he was in regular jail, in custody there, and they were going to use methods such as poisoning. But that didn't go through. And the second attempt was being planned, actually, by these individuals to target him when they were transferring Pastor uh, Bronson from jail to his house where he would be under house arrest. Now, they had informants, and these are, this is Turkish government. The informants reported this, and the head of this team, this is a five-member team, the head of this team, his name or his uh, pseudonym is Sarjan, and they have already started collecting evidence, including the fact that he was offered a contract worth $3 million to eliminate Pastor Bronson in jail or via assassination between jail and, 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 and his house for his house arrest. $3 million. Now, so far, they are not saying who was offering the $3 million. This contract was signed. Now we have one name, four other individuals, at least five of them total. They have been rounded up. They are in custody. They are being interrogated. So we are expecting more developments on this. And we will, of course, update our viewers on this very, very important development Six months ago, I contacted Noreen Bronson. I was going to tell her about this assassination plot against her husband. 
I was going to tell her, which we did actually in our video report, in our article report, about how certain elements within the CIA, you know, these people were sabotaging uh, Trump and Pence's negotiation with the Turkish government towards the release of this guy, Pastor Bronson. But from what we gathered, what we found out, and later confirmed by various articles, news articles coming out in Turkey and elsewhere, that actually Noreen Bronson, the pastor's wife, happens to be also involved with the CIA. So she's not just some pastor's wife, but she's actually an active CIA operative. Now, and Sibel, this information that you're referring to had just come out within the last few days or so. It was released by the Turkish government, this information pertaining to Brunson, Andrew Brunson and his wife Norween and their connections uh, with these intelligence agencies. Now, initially when our report first was published, breaking news in February, at that point in time, we didn't have as much information as we do now, and we were basically giving the position, which we always try to do, is to be giving the benefit of the doubt uh, until we see the facts. Well, now, uh, Turkey has released some information about Brunson, about this pastor. We broke the news for the first time in English here just a few days ago. Now, you just shared with uh, me just uh, recently, a day or two ago, this, this new report about this assassination attempt, which is being blacked out by the media. You think that this would be a huge, huge breaking news story that would be everywhere. We're not seeing it anywhere. Now, the report is only in Turkish. I myself don't uh, read or speak Turkish. You, you are half Turkish. You're from the region, from Turkey. Uh, what I, what I could read from the article, the only part that I could read was Sabel Edmonds, and it was everywhere in the article. Sabel Edmonds, Sabel Edmonds, Sabel Edmonds. What, tell our viewers a little bit about what this is pertaining to. Basically, these people, at least the ones who are reporting on this very uh, important development, they are real journalists and they are able to connect the dots. Because while our report didn't receive much attention here in the States, it received a lot of attention in Turkey and elsewhere in the region. So they, they are able to, as journalists, you would think, okay, put two and two together and that's what they are doing. And the fact that once the government there, they received this information from their informants on this hit job that has been placed on this guy Bronson, they also put the two and two together with the warning that our breaking news provided six months ago they were able to actually investigate this more thoroughly, and they are still in the midst of investigation. It's not over. For example, the reason I can't provide further analysis on this is I haven't seen all the documentations. We only have a first name. The guy's name is Sarjan. Seems to be someone with like a mafia figure in, in Turkey because they are saying that he his background check shows uh, dozens and dozens of uh criminal uh, citations. So this is someone who is very familiar with the dark criminal world. Of course, what this guy is doing out there free in Turkey, we don't know. We don't have his last name. But the fact that they have gotten these people's uh, computer, their cell phones, and they are specific enough about this contract being $3 million contract by the CIA to get this pastor assassinated as part of a larger plot targeting Turkey. And of course, we know all this goes back to Fethullah Gulen. Even the fact that CIA is hiring them is a major question mark as far as evidence is concerned, um, because we don't know who did he sign this contract with at this point. I'm expecting more information will be coming out. Now they may come and show that it is coming. The contract was offered by Fethullah Gulen, the terrorist mullah who is uh, working for the CIA. So whether they link it directly with a slam dunk proof to Fethullah Gulen in the U.S. or the CIA, basically all roads lead to the same place, in this case to Fethullah Gulen working for the CIA. Therefore, it doesn't matter if it came directly from the CIA or did it go via CIA's proxy, Fethullah Gulen. But again, we are still having nothing but silence from Pastor Bronson's wife, uh, Maureen, uh, Noreen Bronson. And uh, I spoke with a couple of my sources in Turkey, and I told them that, you know, uh, I asked them, I said, well, 
you know that this threat exists and this guy will be more at risk being under house arrest than be in jail with 24 by 7 protection, preferably in a solitary confinement because there are people who want to take this guy out. I was told by my source, inside source, that uh, they have 24 by 7 security uh, uh, protecting Pastor Bronson, uh, both ways pr protecting him, not only because they don't want him to escape, they have confiscated his passport, he's under house arrest. The next court hearing is scheduled for October 12th, but also they are protecting him because they know that there are these criminal groups who have received contract to uh, eliminate this guy and make Turkish government or pe Turkish officials look really bad at saying, okay, he died because this was something that the Turkish government did. Right, of course, chalking it up to uh, human rights abuses and further demonizing the Turkish government, who is being targeted right now uh, on many fronts by the West. Uh, I mean, just look at their the lira, it's at an all-time low, 5 uh, point three seven lira equals one dollar. I mean, it's it's outrageous. Now there was a couple last points here that I want to uh, uh, touch on. Um, some things about uh, intercepted communications. What do we know about communications linking Brunson to certain intelligence agencies? Yes, I have been reading, and there's tons of information. But I also am being cautious. Otherwise, I would have even a longer analysis on this while they are citing based on the leaks they have received received from the government insiders in Turkey, while they are citing the facts, in some cases it's almost like alleged facts because I don't have documents, evidence going along with facts. And as you know, people can say anything. People can claim anything. But some of these uh, facts are, uh, are actually pretty specific. For example, the direct link that they have established, and I have to say links, multiple links, between Pastor or the posing Pastor Brunson and Graham Fuller. Graham Fuller, again, is a very, very important character. Graham Fuller was the CIA's station chief in Turkey, okay? So you're not looking at some low-level CIA guy, and even though he is saying he's retired, he has never really retired. He is continuing his covert operations. In fact, he played the biggest role uh, coordinating with Petullah Gulen's uh, faction for this attempted coup in Turkey. Uh, they have established uh, multiple, multiple uh, contacts between Pastor Bronson and some of the top lieutenants for Fethullah Gulen. So that's very interesting. Uh, the other thing that I have been reading has to do with, again, his meetings and phone uh, conversation repeatedly multiple with this guy who is from Utah and uh, he was part of the Air Force intelligence and now he's somewhere in Pennsylvania, very close to Fethullah Gulen. He's an American Air Force uh, 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 official. And most importantly, this is one of the newest thing I found out and this was through my contacts, my sources, was that initially Pastor Bronson uh, was working with this covert um, religious evangelical intelligence group, which I didn't even know what that was. It's very similar to what Catholics have, and that is they have their own governance, and that includes intelligence gathering, okay? That he was working with the intelligence arms of this particular evangelical groups, which they're Biggest thing is information gathering, but also converting people uh, to into Christianity. That's that was when he first went to Turkey, and this is almost two decades ago. This guy, this so-called pastor, has been has been living in Turkey for 15, 20 years. Then what happened was he was recruited and utilized by the CIA because one of the operations he was involved with. And this for Turkey, that, that actually would mount to a death penalty. He was making deals with certain Kurdish factions, okay, in Syria, in Iraq, and, and trying to unite some of these Kurdish factions, okay, and, uh, and, and with the promise of having individual uh, recognized country for as Kurdistan under one condition 
under one condition that these Kurdish factions would declare their country a Christian Kurdish faction. As you know, majority of the Kurds are Muslims. Uh, I don't know about the percentage factions of Shia versus Sunnis. They have their own language. But the fact that there are those Kurds who have converted to Christianity and they are actually converting more Kurds into Christianity and that this particular guy, Pastor Bronson, working together with this evangelical group that is not the real evangelical group, but like an intelligence operations together with the CIA, especially during the sensitive period with Syria. So that was one of the bargaining tokens supposedly in there saying that, yes, they will truly lobby, push for an independent Kurdistan if the independent Kurdistan declares itself as Christian Kurdistan. Again, this is mind boggling. This is the first time I'm hearing about this angle in, in the Turkey-US relations and the Kurdish issues. I haven't confirmed it by other outside sources, so I'm working on it, I'm reading it, I'm trying to get my head around it and, and figure this thing out, but I have to tell you this, it's convoluted, it's, uh, it's dirty, it's a dirty game. Well, that uh, it's extremely interesting and somewhat non-surprising, I guess I would have to say that, uh, you know, these uh, religious uh, groups uh, being as powerful as they are, having as much influence as they do and the resources and the money and everything that they have their own intelligence uh, operatives, basically, which is, uh, go ahead. No, 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 I'm saying that's a very good point you made. And in a way, I don't want to say it's positive. I think it's good for this kind of information to come out because usually people think Muslim terrorist organization and cells, intelligence gathering operatives, but we've also heard throughout the last half century, basically on Mossad and certain Zionist factions who are engaged in similar types of operations. Of course, Vatican and Catholics, they have a long hundreds of years of track record being involved in these kinds of geopolitical intelligence gathering and operations as operatives. I'm not saying all Catholics. I'm talking about those who are after power. And those people who are after power, they always resort to dirty games. You know, it's, it's one of the things that is given. And now we are seeing this with this particular evangelical group, which is totally brand new information for me, to say that, look, when it comes to power-hungry people and abusing and utilizing and misusing religion, religion, that are supposed to be there with good intention for these kinds of nefarious hunger, geopolitical hunger. It doesn't make a difference whether you're a Zionist or you're a Muslim or you're, you're doing it for the Catholics or you're doing it for Hindus. It doesn't make any difference. The purpose, the object, objective is the same. It's money and power. And when it, when it comes to money and power, it doesn't uh, really distinguish itself as one or another religion. It goes around and it, it, it touches every single factions of, the, of various groups of religious groups who actually divert from the real principles of religion and get into the geopolitical uh, land grab or power grab game. Of course, uh, absolutely. Uh, they're exploiting uh, these avenues uh, for their own agendas. Now, this again is bombshell breaking news that is so huge. I mean, I, I just can't emphasize it enough. This is huge. The, the attempted assassination, a foiled a, a assassination attempt on this American U.S. pastor, Andrew Brunson, in Turkey that was appears to be contracted out by the CIA to take place in Turkey to frame Turkey uh, you know, it's just unbelievable. Of course, the Kurdish issue is a, is a major hot button issue in Turkey that's been going on for a long time. That's a topic for another episode that uh, to further help people understand who aren't familiar with. Um, but at this point, uh, what what is the status of Brunson and how do you seeing this? How do you see this playing out, really? Uh, I, I have to say, as I just mentioned, it's convoluted because you're seeing sim similar tactics for, for the Turkish government side. You know, they were playing for a while good cop, bad cops, the U.S. government. You know, State Department played the bad cop, and it seemed that maybe Pence or some of their groups were playing the good cop, saying, no, we are negotiating it with Turkey, 
and we are moving towards positive development in past Pastor Brunson case, I'm seeing a similar trend on Turkey side because you have certain leaders in Turkey, officials talking very tough and saying this is unacceptable. You can't come and issue threats against Turkish judiciary system, etc. And we're going to retaliate against you. But then you are seeing other elements, uh, other Turkish officials who are trying to calm people down and say, look, this is a this is unfortunate, but it's not getting the way of Turkey US alliance in Syria on Idlib issue and some of the other weapons issues that we are saw resolving. So things are not that terrible. We're going to work it out. We are great allies of, you know, ally of the United States. We are a NATO member. So it's very hard. It's it's the politics, you know. It's, it's smoke and mirrors and then you have confusion and chaos, which is a you know, frequently used, commonly used uh, tactic, confuse the heck out of people, okay, so that there is no truth coming out of anything uh, other than even further confusion. So I'm seeing it being played by both sides. And, and it's a game. It's a game because one of the high-level persons I spoke with, they actually, this person assured me that what uh, Vice President Pence and Trump, uh, President Trump did was not some naive move without thinking that there is a strategy, that there is supposed to be some kind of sanity in the, within this madness we are seeing, and is some kind of a tactic. Now, what that objective is, what that tactic is, we don't know at this point, because it, as I said, it's very convoluted. I have to say the same thing for Turkey, but one thing we know is they want Fed to lock Yulan, this criminal terrorist with two twenty billion plus net worth back in Turkey, so he can go through his trials. And they are still engaged in gathering intelligence, further intelligence. How much of that, even if it would be damning for the you know to the United States, would they release? We don't know because in cases like this, whether it's Russia or Turkey or U.S., sometimes you find the smoking gun. Let's say there's a smoking gun that would implicate the United States. Now, you have two options as a nation. Let's say if you're Putin in Russia or Turkey, you can say, I'm going to publicize this and embarrass the United States for a couple of days because it becomes old news after that. And not many people are going to get shocked with these types of developments. Or I can basically hold it close. I won't give it out. And it would be part of the blackmail dance. You know, you do this to us, U.S., we're going to make this public. Or uh, the United States saying, Turkey, you do this, we're going to go ahead and do this. For example, the United States is still sitting on the conclusion of that Zarab case. Uh, they are waiting for the right moment to blackmail Turkey further with that Zarab case that took place in New York. And it was nothing but a Hollywood script and shenanigans. So uh, it's equal for both sides, Turkey and the United States. We don't know the, the real objectives. We don't know how much of this information they are keeping under, you know, the tight, closed lid. Uh, so far, this is what we are getting from the media. But with further analysis and further information, we will be back and providing our viewers with more information. Well, that's right. And again, just to quickly recap, uh, breaking news with NewsBuzz founder and editor Sabelle Edmonds uh, exposing here in English for the first time this failed assassination attempt against this U.S. pastor, Andrew Brunson. As you said, it's very convoluted, very complicated. There's a lot of elements involved, multiple governments, multiple intelligence agencies. It looks, I mean, there. this is almost right out of a movie. Uh, you wouldn't believe it if it was, you know, uh, what do they say? The, the saying is that uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be we're going to be keeping close eyes on this and keeping you up to date with all the latest developments. For more information on Gulan, see our Gulan playlist on YouTube. It's packed with a lot of information there for you. And of course, uh, this wraps up this breaking report. I'd like to thank Sabelle Edmonds for her time, and we'd like to thank you all for your support. Uh, stay tuned for more news analysis and breaking reports.